All right, so we've already we've already uh, filleted the fish. We've cut them up in our check our chunks that we want, and then we left off where we were brining them. And I said I like to do them overnight. So now it's overnight, and now we're getting started. So I took all the water out. I took all the water out of everything. So this is what it's gonna look like. And basically, I'm gonna just throw them on here. And the chunks that I cut up yesterday when I was showing everybody. And what we had done is one we had, after we had put them on brine, we rinsed them out, rinsed the pieces out, we've taken them out, rinsed them off with water, and then we had set them all up on towels and put a fan on them so that it air dried them. You probably want to do that for about, I do it for about 30 minutes to about 40 minutes. I don't want it to get it to really firm, but I do want to get it to where it's dried up because what has, what, what has happened before is that I've, I've just rinsed them off and then I put them on the rack and then I put them in the smoker. And I'm gonna show you guys the smoker today too, what it looks like after we get all these put on. Is that after I did that, it was uh, it was really mushy. So when you put the fan on it and let it dry out a little bit, it won't it won't be uh, as mushy. It'll be more. It'll have more of a texture to it. So, like I said to show you guys too, um, my uh, racks are four foot by four and a half feet. So gives you an idea how big. Remember when I said the other day I said how it's not gonna all that fish isn't gonna fit on there at once. Well, so that's why I'm kind of spacing them out a little bit more. And then you kind of have to because it's so heavy, you kind of have to center like all your big pieces and whatnot to make sure that it's not sitting. sitting into one general spot so because it will too it will bow it doesn't matter how you uh, what way you lay them really but the but the smoke will go from front to back on here and then you kind of have to keep an eye on not the fire let the fire get too hot well, you kind of want it hot, but you don't want it too hot. Sometimes if I, I let it die out a little bit, it, it will it will take a lot longer. But if I'm constantly watching it and getting an idea of it and, and keep, it, keep it, a good eye on it, I, I seem to do better with the texture with it. Now, now, too, before I start getting too much into this, I wanted to go over the different types of wood that I'm using. So in this case, this is the interior fire, is the dry alder that I'm always talking about. To give you an example of what it looks like, this is what it is. Like I said, I cut them in about 12, 12 inch sections so that it stays on, stays on the fire, it stays perfectly for my fire. Now, if it starts to get going too good or or it gets too hot, and then I'll have this. Of course, it's split too, and, and then I put them on. I don't put them on whole. And then this is the wet alder. And the alder normally means, or alder means, not normally means, alder means is, a, is a, I think it's a German word for the wood that bleeds. So when you make the first cuts of this, it will be white, but then over time it turns red. So that's why it's called alder. So if you look it up, that's what it means, the wood that bleeds. So this will go on the exterior part of the fire to give it, and then when you have green on there, it enhances the smoke, like to make it really significant. You can really like it; just has a whole different. Uh, I don't know how to say it. It's a, it has a whole different. It's like a cloud compared to just a um, a mist, I guess. I don't know if that was a if that's a, a good analogy or not, but. It's just, you can't see in it. It hurts your eyes, it hurts everything.
So slowly getting these put together. It's like an adult puzzle at this point. But as you see, I'm giving it some space and trying not to overlap each other. Because I'm actually coming down to the bottom. The last, this is the home stretch right here with it. And then I'll flip them all over. And what I did, I don't know whatever, what other uh, spices anybody else likes, but all I, you can tell, all I did was put a little bit of pepper over it. And I'm not a crazy fan of pepper, like, heavily, but I do like it enough to where it has a kick to it. So it kind of just that, I guess it would be a dash, like, lightly put it over there. So that's, that's what I put on it. For seasoning I always like to have that little bit of pepper on it I think it was approximately I don't know seven fish or so and then there was a mixture that we had in there we had springers and blueback in here and they come from Colombia the Colombia Then once once I finish fill this in, I'll take us over and we'll get a look at the the smoker itself. I know I got asked a lot how to put it, how I put it on. Same way with the jerky, it's the same way. The same racks are the same size. Everything is built the same way. But you don't, I don't mix the jerky. I don't want my jerky tasting like salmon. So we have to have two different sheds to do this. And they're, they're identical. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference if you're just looking at the exterior part of them. And this is always the tricky part. You have to literally put your back into it when you're starting to lift this thing. All right, this is our last part. This is the last pieces right here. So I'm actually gonna fill up the whole, the whole rack. And this is like normally where you break out your camera and start taking pictures of it and be proud of it. So, but we'll probably print screen it or something to get a good picture of it. And there we go. All right, so now the next step is once we got this all laid down, we already got the fire going. So now we're gonna turn it around and then show you guys this, the smoker and uh, what it looks like as we put it in. I know I got asked, what does it look like when, when you put when you put it in to the shed. So I always gotta watch your belly too. All right, here we go. This thing probably weighs like a hundred pounds. And you'll notice I have, I have the wood inside and outside of it to hold it on. So you'll notice the fire too. Right now our dry alder is going and then we'll build it up a little bit more and then we'll put on the exterior part, the green alder as it goes. We have two racks and this is what it looks like. Let me know if you have any questions, if you guys wanna see the done product. All right, have a good night.